This is the Hard Clue Bible. My name is Seve, and I am thrilled to share this beastly guide with you all. I've been a Clue Scroll enthusiast for years, and working on this project has been incredibly fulfilling. Trust me when I say, a lot of sleepless nights have gone into making this. My purpose in creating this guide is to give players an all-in-one, go-to resource that not only gives helpful tips and tricks to solving clue steps, but also inspires them to drop what they're doing every time they receive a clue scroll to go solve it. Third Age is the most sought-after equipment in the entire game, especially for collection loggers. Those extremely rare items are what truly drive me to complete thousands and thousands of clues. I want to preface this video by saying this clue bible will likely be out of date by next week, and it'll only get worse as time goes on. The description of this video is your friend. Go check it out. I've timestamped every single clue step for your convenience. Use the search feature by typing Control F, then search for the clue step you have by typing out the clue verbatim. Due to character limit, cryptic clues will only include the first three words. Coordinate steps can be easily found by typing the eight numbers in a row without commas or spaces. This is my first attempt at a massive guide, so if you have any questions or suggestions for improvements, leave it all down in the comments. I will read every single one. YouTube channel memberships are finally available on my channel. There are two levels if you wish to support. For five bucks a month, you can become a Saze Bay. This gives you access to loyalty badges, custom emojis, shoutouts, and priority replies to your comments. For 20 bucks a month, you can become a Saze King. This gives all the same perks as a Bay, but I will also give you a follow or add on any social media platforms you might have, such as Twitch, YouTube, Discord, and Twitter. If you have the financial means, it would truly mean the world to me. If we reach 50 members, I will upload all previous and future rambles to Spotify and other podcast platforms. Thank you all so much. Now, without further ado, let's talk clues. If you're a main account, I would highly suggest opening implings for your hard clues. Natures, magpies, and ninjas are the implings you open. However, if you play as an Iron Man account, I would suggest these three methods. First one you're seeing is jellies. Killing warped jellies in the catacombs is the best way to get hard clues immediately. With full focus and with the hard combat achievements completed, you can expect to complete from scratch six hard clues an hour. Alongside being the fastest method to get hard clues immediately, you also get a completed dark totem every three hours on average. This method does, however, require a lot of runes to camp long term specifically death runes and blood runes. Luckily, Guardians of the Rift was released, and with it comes the feasibility to be able to craft your own runes through the Abyss, and I would highly recommend that. There still is the option, however, to buy runes with GP if you need. The second method I recommend is green dragons out in the wilderness. Now, a lot of people say, what about hellhounds? I strongly discourage killing hellhounds in the wilderness. There's a few reasons why. One, they don't drop anything. Two, they have double the HP as a green dragon. And three, you can't use a lance against them. Well, you could, but you're not going to get any bonus. I personally prefer the west spot for green dragons, where the three spawn. And I prefer using void because you don't lose it below 20 wilderness. With hard combat achievements completed, you'll get a hard clue every 60 dragons. And on average, you can complete from scratch four hard clues an hour. And on top of that, You'll be banking 240 dragon bones and 240 green d hides every hour on top of other loot. The third method is Serachnus. Now, Serachnus is technically the most efficient to get hard clues because they are considered zero time. And the reason they're considered zero time is because Serachnus also drops elites, and it happens to be the fastest way to get elites currently in the game for irons. This option is more for macro-efficient clue hunters that are going very, very long-term. You'll only be getting about one to two hard clues an hour, real-time. This is my hard clue tab. I've arranged it for quick access and easy withdrawal. I click in a zigzag pattern across the top two rows, then the next two rows. While the bank is still open, I equip the bottom nine items in my inventory using the Equipment tab F key. I then return to the bank interface and click the five rightmost items from top to bottom. That's it. Each one of these items and pieces of gear I've withdrawn have been meticulously chosen to optimize the majority of hard clue steps. Each teleport item in my inventory gives benefit 
to two or more steps. The ones left in the bank generally only help with one. Further down in the tab, you'll find all the other items and teleports needed for each and every current hard clue step. The key ring opens the elemental workshop wall. The enchanted liar imbued is used to reach Nate is not. The imbued skull scepter teleports you directly to Barbarian Village. The Book of the Dead is used to teleport to Shazian. Zarek's talisman is used for faster access to Karend, generally only used if there's no need to drink from the Ornate Pool and you're close to a bank. The Barbarian Teleport tab is the fastest option to get to the Barbarian Agility course. The Arania Altar tab is used to reach the crate east of the Observatory. Abyssal Bracelets prevent you from sculling when entering the Abyss. The Pharaoh Scepter is used to teleport to Pyramid Plunder and the Agility Pyramid. I personally don't use this item in the main loadout due to Wilderness Risk. The Quest Cape is used to quickly reach the Picnic Benches south of the Legends Guild. Dragon's Medallion is used to teleport to Sleep. The Ectophile is used to reach Pirate Pete. Trollheim Tabs are used to reach the Summit of Trollheim. Padawa Tabs are used to teleport to Edgedal Dungeon to dig near the Cauldron. I have a Master Clue and an Elite Clue in the layout simply because if I don't have them in here, the Hard Clue layout tends to start getting buggy, and that's a Rune Light problem. I then have a Pickaxe to navigate through Motherload Mine, an Axe, and a Hatchet to cross into the Karazi Jungle, Goblin Village Spheres to reach General Bentnose, Dark Crab Teleports from LMS to teleport north of Venonatus, and Anacarl Teleports in case I'm already at the bank when I get that Dig Step. I want to make it very clear that this layout can be altered in any way you see fit. I switch things around here and there quite often to be honest, and the game continually gets updated. I chose a Blade of Saildor because it's decent DPS and saves me an inventory spot that would otherwise have gone to the Wilderness Sword 4. The Blade does not have a 100% chance to slash webs, but it's very close. When Raids 3 comes out, I will be replacing the Blade with the new 2-tick Magic Wand because it allows the Gommel's Hilt as an offhand and it's incredibly high DPS. Now you might be wondering, what am I risking by bringing all of this stuff into the wilderness for certain wilderness steps? Well, let's take a look. Protect item will be enabled, of course, if you're getting attacked, be sure to protect your item. And be sure to check your world so you're not on target worlds. Killed by a player and beyond 20 wilderness. So if you're not beyond 20 wilderness, you actually save your max cape. And if you are beyond it, then you will lose it. But it's just GP, and I think you'll be able to just drop the untradeable if you know for a fact that you're going to die. You do keep the Master Scroll Book. I still keep less than 50 scrolls of each, just in case something goes wrong, but I will keep it on death, it looks like so. There's a new Rune Light update which allows you to customize individual objects such as ladders and stairs. I highly recommend using this feature on commonly scaled ladders, such as this one in the Lumbridge Windmill, and the ones in the Grand Tree. There are definitely plenty more as well that you'll find useful around Gilinor. This is my POH. You'll be teleporting here quite often when clue hunting. There are six essential teleports that I'd highly recommend installing before camping clues long term. The Portal Nexus, Mounted Dig Site Pendant, the Mounted Xerix Talisman, Spiritual Fairy Tree, the Jewelry Box, and the Obelisk. And of course the Ornate Pool to restore your stats here and there. Now there's no perfect layout for the Portal Nexus obviously, but I want to go through mine real quickly to give you an idea of how I organize it. If you set it up the same way I do, it'll be a lot more convenient when I start showing you each clue step solved. We got Lumberge at 1, 2 Varrock, 3 Grand Exchange, 4 Falador, 5 Camelot, 6 Sears Village, which is also the default left click option, 7 Ardoin, 8 Watchtower, 9 Yanil, A Apatola Dungeon, B Barrows, C Catherby, D Drainer Manor, E Waterbirth Island, F, Fishing Guild, G, Mind Altar, H, Harmony Island, I, Lunar Isle, J, Fankenstrain's Castle, K, Carol, L, Archaeus Library, M, Merim, N, Anna Carl, O, Cemetery, P, Carl Longer, Q, Gorok, R, West Ardoin, S, Sentisten, T, Troll Stronghold, and finally, U, for Wace. I'd like to state real quickly that I was very tempted to solve each clue step with multiple routes ranging from low to high level players, however it started to just drag on pretty badly to be honest. In this version of the clue bible I will only be showing the most efficient solve for each. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, smash that like button, and let's get into the steps.
Use Gommel's Hilt to teleport to Trollheim. Pray range against the throwers and pray melee against the ice trolls in the cave. Highlight the crevice for easier convenience. Use your diary cape and press B. Use the spirit tree in your POH and press 1. Use your diary cape and press F. Run around the gnome ball course in a counterclockwise manner until you find the coach. Withdraw a pickaxe from your bank, then rub your skills necklace and press 2. Withdraw your dragon's medallion and teleport to sleep. Run to the northwest corner of the sanctuary, then climb up the stairs to find Dare Krond. Withdraw an abyssal bracelet, then use your diary cape and press E. Click on one of the two highlighted spots on the ditch. Once you've entered the abyss, try to find a gap to squeeze through, as those are the fastest obstacles. Use your diary cape and press B. Locate your minigame tab and teleport to Blast Furnace. Click the tile adjacent to the door before entering. Use your portal nexus in the POH and press B. Shift click your Ardoin cloak to the monastery. Use the spirit tree in your house and press A. Use your diary cape and press 6. Wait until you see two parrot dialogues before typing your answer. Use the mostly harmless teleport scroll in your master scrollbook. Then run south to Brother Tranquility. Rub your game's necklace and press 1. Click on the front door of the pub immediately. Teleport to Drainer Village using your Eternal Glory. Click on the front door directly. Teleport to Edgeville with your Glory. Click the gate, the tile adjacent to the front door, then down the trapdoor. Use the Portal Nexus in your POH and press M. Try to anticipate the staircase upon arrival at Apatol. Click Awawoge one tick after your true tile has entered. Shift-click your western banner to teleport to Piscatoris. Teleport to your POH unless there's another fairy ring closer. 
Use the codes listed below to enter the Fairy Queen's hideout. The Fairy Queen will always be found in the southeasternmost room. Teleport to your POH and use your Fairy Ring to Xanaris. Run through the wheat field to the southeast room. Withdraw Barbarian Teleport Tab from your bank. Open either side of the gate and squeeze through the pipe. Select POH portals on your max cape and press 9. Select Fishing Teleports on your Max Cape and press 2. Use the Fairy Ring in your home to teleport to the Fisher's Realm. Click the east side door of the castle entrance. Click the staircase to path to the adjacent tile of the door. The weird old man will be found west of the fairy ring. Withdraw an Ectophile from your bank and teleport with it. Pirate Pete is found on the northeast dock. Use Fairy Code BJS, then run northeast to the Tyrus Camp. Spam click the Stick Trap for a 100% success rate. Use a Yorworth Camp Teleport Scroll in your Master Scroll Book, then run south. Spam click the Stick Trap. Use Fairy Code CLP. Then run two tiles north and dig. Teleport to the Duel Arena using your Ring of Dueling, then run all the way around the Duel Arena. Use Fairy Code AIR at your nearest Fairy Ring. Use your Mauritania legs to teleport to Bergdorot. Stay north and then run around the river. Once again, teleport with your Mauritania legs to Bergdorot. Dig on the outside diagonal of the ruins. Use your diary cape and press 9. Run northeast to the Tsar exit. Now path northwest, then climb up the rope to Crandor Island. Mark the rope for easier convenience.
Use fairy code BIQ. Then run southwest to the Bedabin camp. Select POH portals on your Maxcape and press 8. Click the southern door on both Yanil entries. Now head south to the recently added Gutenoth shortcut. Use fairy code AKS. Stay west until you're able to see the tunnel that leads to Gutenoth Island. Use fairy code DKP. Then run southeast until you find the gate to the shipyard. Use your spade on the outside of the hut. Select POH portals on your Maxcape and press 9. Using a crystal teleport seed to Prifinus from your bank is slightly faster, although I prefer the POH portal because of the higher likelihood to spot a crystal imp. Red spider eggs stack up quickly. Be sure to pick up one before dipping. Use fairy code BIP, then head over to Nature Spirits Grotto. Use your diary cape and press 8. Right click the agility obstacle mounds and climb the middle rocks. This gives a chance of saving a tick over climbing the southern rocks. Rub the camulet and press 2. Run around the large dunes and head west. Commune with your royal seed pod. Climb up the three ladders, then use the gnome glider to Gondius. Withdraw an axe and a machete. Use your diary cape and press 8. Chop down both of the highlighted jungle bushes to reach the Karazi jungle. Run southeast to the pool. Use fairy code BKR and run west. Shift-click your Karamja Gloves 4 to Duradel. Head down the ladder, then click the northern part of the gate to exit Shiloh Village. Climb the Agility Obstacle Vine, then head southeast over to the Totem Pole. Once again, withdraw your axe and your hatchet from your bank. Use your diary cape, press 8. Clear both jungle patches, then run southwest over to the beach. Withdraw your Book of the Dead from your bank. Shift click it, press 3. Now head southwest over to the dig spot.
teleport with your diary cape and press E. Head north to the dig spot. Withdraw a Trollheim teleport tab from your bank. Break a Karlonger teleport tab to the Graveyard of Shadows. Teleport to the Troll Stronghold using the Portal Nexus and pressing T. Mining salts for individual teleports is not worth it long term. Head over to level 19 Wilderness using your Obelisk and your POH and pressing 2. Now head east. Use your Glory or any other level 30 teleport to exit the wilderness. Rub your burning amulet and press 2 to head to the bandit camp. Pray melee and run north. Use the obelisk in your house once again. Press 2 to teleport to 19 wilderness. For this coordinate in specific, path north around the lava pool to the dig spot. Shift click your western banner to Piscatoris. Now head northeast to the dig spot. Use fairy code DJR. Then head north over to the Lizardman Canyon. Use Fairy Code DKS. Run down the snowy hill to the west, over to the dig spot. For this step, head to the Portal Nexus in your POH and press O. You'll be below 30 Wilderness, so as soon as the Zamorak Wizard dies, teleport out with your glory. Although Runelight says North of Bandit Camp, go to your POH and use the Obelisk and press 4. Run south and dig one tile south of the Runelight Indicator. This will put you two ticks from the 30 line. When banking at Edgeville, click the banker to save one tick. Run to a bank and withdraw a Wilderness Crab Teleport. Run west over to the dig spot. Now head south to the 30 line. Select other teleports on your max cape and teleport to Black Chinchampas. Prepare to click north and dig. Standing one tile south of the Runelight Indicator here will actually save you one tick on your return to the 30 line. Teleport to Xerix Inferno using the mounted Xerix Talisman in your POH. If there's no need to restore your stats using the Ornate Pool and you're close enough to a bank, withdraw Xerix Talisman from the bank. Use the Black Chinchampa Teleport on your Maxcape. Head east, past Vedion, toward the Dwarves. If you've ran out of your five daily teleports, use the Portal Nexus to teleport to Anacarl, then head south. Run south to the level 30 line. 
Once again, use your Black Chinchampa Teleport from your Max Cape and run north. If you've used your 5 daily teleports, use a Revenant Cave Teleport from your Master Scrollbook. Once again, standing south of the Runelight Indicator will save you one tick when returning to the 30 line. Rub your Burning Amulet and press 3 to teleport to the Lava Maze. Run west to the Dig Spot. Then head south to the 30 line. Have Dig Site pre-selected on your mounted Dig Site pendant in your POH. Head east to the boat, then run through the museum camp over to the east. Using your burning amulet for the step is slightly faster, although if you don't have full stats and you need spec regen, go to your POH and use the obelisk. You'll want to dig one tile north of the runelight indicator, so that you're two ticks away from the ladder going down to KBD. Pull the lever and prepare to teleport out. It's suboptimal to enter the wilderness without full HP and full prayer. Again, the burning amulet is slightly faster, but use the obelisk in your POH if you need to restore. The fastest way out of the wilderness from here is using the KBD lever. Teleport to your POH and press the letter N to teleport to Anacarl through your portal nexus. Of course, if you'd like, you can pick up the Blood Rune on your way back. Then head to the level 50 obelisk to teleport out. Just like with the museum camp step, be sure to configure your dig site pendant on the wall to dig site. This will save you a tick. It's more convenient, and it'll save you time if you plan to camp hard clues long term. Press 2 to go north, press 3 to head to the island. Use your spade immediately upon arrival. Use fairy code AJS. And be sure to not misclick an innocent penguin. Break your Ice Plateau Teleport tab and head into the Wilderness Agility course. Now if you care about Agility XP or the Giant Squirrel Pet, it is effectively worth it complete this agility course while doing this step. You can save a tick by digging either directly on or east or west of the Runelight Indicator. Climb up the eastern rocks, then click the eastern gate to leave the agility course. It's significantly faster to teleport out using the Mage Bank rather than running to the 44 Opolis. Use your POH obelisk and press 6 to teleport to 50 Wilderness. Head back to the 50 obelisk to leave the Wilderness. With your respawn point set to Edgeville, use your Ring of Returning and then pull the lever out to the Wilderness. Return to safety by pulling the lever once again. Break your Ice Plateau Teleport tab once again, and head over to the Pirate Hideout. Mage Bank is the fastest way to exit the wilderness.
break your ice plateau teleport tab, head northeast, dig. This is the only clue step where you'll be exiting the wilderness through the 44 obelisk. Click the western gate to save a tick. Rub your ring of returning and pull the lever. For maximum efficiency, click the tile east of the runelight indicator. Then return and pull the lever. Use a Revenant Cave teleport from your Master Scrollbook, then run northeast. When exiting the wilderness, it's actually 8 ticks faster to use the Obelisk rather than running all the way to the 30 line. Teleport to the Monastery using your equipped Combat Bracelet. Use Fairy Code BJS. Then run northeast to the Tyrus camp where you'll find General Hining. Use Fishing Teleports on your Max Cape and press 2 to teleport to Otto's Grotto. Click the northern part of the gate. Then click the tile adjacent to the door before opening it. Teleport to Drainer Village using your glory. If the door of the House of the Wise Old Man is shut, click on the bookcase to path to where you need to dig. Use Fairy Code AIQ. Use Fairy Code AIR. Once again, use fairy code ALP. Use the spirit tree in your POH and press 8. Then run northwest. Use fairy code BIP. Once again, locate your nearest fairy ring and use code BJR to teleport to the Fisher Realm. This is the only fairy code clue step where you will not be using a fairy ring. Instead, use your diary cape and press 9. Use fairy code CIS. Use your royal seed pod, climb up the ladder once, and head east. Use fairy code CKP to teleport to Cosmic Entity's plane. Using Fairy Ring Code CIP is slightly faster than teleporting directly with your Ring of Wealth.
Use your ring of returning, then dig anywhere within two tiles of the yew tree. This is the fastest hard clue step. Use your master scroll book and click to Morton. Locate your nearest spirit tree and press A. Climb down the staircase to the northwest. Thanks to Runelight's extremely far draw distance, you can highlight the strange floor for easier convenience. Teleport to the Champions Guild using your combat bracelet. Click the tile adjacent to the door before opening it. Use Fairy Ring Code DIP. Again, use Fairy Ring Code DKS. Use the Drainer Village Teleport on your glory and run northeast. It's faster to run north through the barn, then click the eastern door of the windmill. Click on the marked tile before climbing up the stairs to save one tick. Break a Goblin Village Sphere. Then run north into the main hall. Select POH portals on your max cape and press 7 to get to Brimhaven. Run south to reach Sonnebach. Shift click teleport with your Ardoin cloak, then run west over to the clock tower. This is significantly faster than using a spirit tree to the battlefield. Use Fairy Code DLQ, then run northeast over to the crate. When right-clicking the crate, select the second one. It's three ticks faster to use your Ring of Wealth and teleport to the Grand Exchange over using the Diary Cape and teleporting to Toby. If there's no need to use your Ornit Pool, you have a chance of saving one tick by using your diary cape and pressing F to get to spirit trees. Use your car longer teleport tab, then run east over to the crossbow. Unless you would like to use Catherby teleport tabs from your bank, go to your portal nexus and press C. Run far east to find Elena next to the fruit tree patch. Rub your equipped dueling ring to teleport to the duel arena. Then head northeast and find the room with the altar. Select POH portals on your max cape and press 2. Then run far east over to the fishing shop and Port Sarum. Teleport to the Ranging Guild using your combat bracelet. Then run southeast over to the haystack. If you have a skills necklace in your inventory, rub it and press 4 to get to the cooking guild. If you need to restore your stats at the Ornit Pool, go to your POH and then use the jewelry box. Remember to bring a chef's hat if you're not maxed. Rub your skills necklace and press 2 to get to the mining guild. Run north until you see the mine carts. Select the second one. Run over to a bank to withdraw your enchanted lyre imbued. Play it and press 3 to get to Nate is not. Use 
Use your diary cape and press 9. Head northeast to enter Karumja Volcano. You can save two ticks by ignoring the red spider egg and digging one tile early. Use the Ranger Guild teleport on your combat bracelet. Then head northwest over to the log balance. Then head over to the crate. It's slightly faster to run over to a bank to withdraw a Padawa teleport tab rather than using your ring of returning and heading down the trapdoor. Mark and click the northern gate to save a tick. Squeeze through the pipe and dig near the cauldron. Teleport with your achievement diary cape and press B. This step is the only hard clue step that requires you to only click the drawers once. Use your diary cape and press D. Head north to Barrock Square. Break your Sent to Stand Teleport tab, then head east over to the Exam Center. Use Fairy Code DIS to get to the Wizard's Tower. Another option is using a Necklace of Passage and pressing 1. Click the tile adjacent to the entrance before clicking the door. Marking this ground floor bookcase indicates where the basement door will be. Save a tick by immediately clicking the basement door. Use your candor and headgear to teleport to Sherlock. Then head southwest over to the Sorcerer's Tower. I like to have the door highlighted. Then click the marked tile to save one tick when climbing up the ladder. Teleport to Bergdorot using your Mauritania Legs 4. Run southeast, then click the two tiles I have marked. Shift click your diary cape and press F. Run over and talk to the nearest gnome trainer. Shift click your diary cape once again and press B. If you don't see Hans, run counterclockwise around Lumberge Castle. Use your diary cape and press D. Run north into Verrock Castle. Sir Pryson is found in or around the southwest room. This diary cape is fucking busted. Shift click it and press 3. Then head east up the staircase. Shift-click your Ardoin cape, then run north over to the Ardoin Zoo. Locate your nearest fairy ring, then use code BLQ. Shift-click your camulet and press 2 to teleport to the surface of the temple. Run around the dunes and into the northern tent where you'll find the crate. Select other teleports on your max cape and press 2 to get to the farming guild. Run south. Run through the mines to save one tick. Then dig on the tile I have marked. Teleport to Edgeville, then head northwest to Oziak. Withdraw your Pharaoh Scepter and prepare to left-click the Guardian Mummy. Last week's update, Beneath Curse Sands, changed the destination tile of the Pharaoh Scepter. Use Fairy Code DIS. Click the tile adjacent to the entrance of the Wizard Tower. Then climb up the stairs and talk to Wizard Mizgog. Use the Zalandra Teleport Scroll from your Master Scrollbook. I personally have this one on left click. Withdraw your Imbued Skull Scepter. Shift click it and dig. Use 
Use your royal seed pod. Then climb up three ladders and teleport to Sindar Post, where you'll find Captain Blee Madge. Use your Karumja gloves to teleport to the gem mine. Then climb up the ladder and search the bookcase. Use your diary cape and press 1. Click the drawers twice. For this step, I deposit everything off my back and in my inventory, and only pull out a master scroll book and the clue. Teleport with your lumberyard scroll. Then, fly over to Entrana using the hot air balloon. Click the drawers twice. Teleport with a Lunar Isle Teleport Scroll to get to the closest bank. Select POH portals on your Max Cape and press 8 to get to Yanil. Climb under the wall, slash the web, go down the stairs, cross the agility obstacle, and click the altar. Then click the crate and go up the stairs. For a while, I thought the Duel Arena Teleport was the fastest way to get to the Clan Cup Trophy. It's actually 9 ticks faster using a Diary Cape and pressing 2. Withdraw a key ring from your bank, then teleport to your POH and left-click the portal nexus to Sears Village. Mark and click the southwest tile adjacent to the wall opening. Climb down the stairs and click the crate. Shift-click the diary cape and press B to get to Lumbridge. Climb down the ladder, click the crate. Shift click your Karamja gloves to teleport to Duradel. Climb down the ladder, click the northern part of the gate, leave Shiloh Village, Climb the vine, head east, over to the stash unit. Again, shift-click your Karumja Gloves 4. Climb down the ladder and head into the bank. Select Fishing Teleports on your Max Cape and press 1 to get to the Fishing Guild. Search the Stash Unit, equip the items, and do the emote on the tile I have marked. Use Fairy Code ALP. Enter the Lighthouse and climb up the two staircases. Withdraw your Pharaoh Scepter and click the second teleport option. Don't forget your stash unit items. Run around the agility pyramid. Be careful of moving blocks. Click on the plank tile before actually crossing the plank. This saves one tick. When approaching the second level, click diagonally so that you're guaranteed on the eastern side of the pyramid before clicking the obstacle. This can potentially save you two ticks. Remember to click the plank tile before crossing the plank once again. I highly doubt it's worth the time to exchange the pyramid for 10k, but I do it anyway. Remember to deposit your stash unit items before teleporting out. Withdraw your Pharaoh Scepter and teleport to Pyramid Plunder. Rather than exiting the pyramid, start the minigame, then quick exit to the north.
Break your Sentisten teleport tab and head over to the exam center. Enter the Eastern Hall before doing the emote. Use your Equip Dueling Ring to teleport to Castle Wars. Head south over to Jigig. Then run east over to the stash unit. Use Fairy Code AJR to teleport right outside of the Relica Slayer Cave. Run north, then path east before scaling the agility obstacle. Run east up to the camp, then enter Jockle's tent before doing the emote. Use your Royal Seed Pod. Climb up the three ladders and use the Gnome Glider to Sindarpos. Be on the western side of the stash unit to summon Yuri. This is the only hard clue step where you'll have to drop items in order to de-gear completely. Use Fairy Code ALQ and run east to where I have marked. Remember to pick up your potions and tabs before teleporting. Teleport to your POH. Press 6 on your obelisk to teleport to 50 Wilderness. Run east over to the stash unit. Use the emote on the bridge. The fastest way to leave the wilderness is by heading back to the 50 obelisk. Use your eternal glory to teleport to Karamja. The fastest way to the mess hall is by shift clicking your diary cape and pressing A. Using a mounted Xerix talisman, or banking for your Book of the Dead and teleporting to Hosidius are both 7 to 8 ticks slower. Rub your burning amulet and press 1 to teleport to the Chaos Altar. Be sure to have Mage Prey up. I would highly recommend turning off Auto Retaliate for this step. Rub your burning amulet once again and press 2 to get to the bandit camp. Pray melee and run north to the store. I did not have a double agent spawn, but generally you'll either want to close the door or turn off auto retaliate for this step. Break your ice plateau teleport tab and head east. Click one tile north of Runelight's highlighted tile, then dig. Exit the wilderness by going to the Mage Bank. Rub your burning amulet and press 2 to get to the bandit camp. Head southwest. Click on each of the doors, as there's no way to save any ticks by clicking adjacent. Grab your quest cape from your bank, and shift click it. Run southwest over to the picnic benches. Shift click to open your master scroll book, then click the lumberyard scroll. It's actually significantly faster to head over to a bank and withdraw an Orania teleport tab rather than using your already equipped dueling ring and heading over to Castle Wars. Run south, and search the crate. When using the Portal Nexus, remember to path around the Ornit Pool before drinking from it. 
Use your portal nexus and press R. Run northwest over to the dig spot. Once again, teleport to your POH. Use your portal nexus and press 9. Head into the workshop. For all music steps, rub your Ring of Wealth and press 3 to get to Falador Park. Click the music track on or one tile before the bridge. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you were able to take a few things away from this guide. Remember to follow me on Twitch and Twitter down in the description, and if you'd like to support me tremendously, consider clicking the join button on my YouTube channel to become a member. Have a wonderful day.